All right, so here's the grade nine review. I'm only going to do a couple pages at a time. So we'll start with the measurement review. The first thing we're gonna talk about is Pythagorean theorem. And this only applies to right angle triangles. This refers here to 90 degrees. So what we have to know is that we have to know which side is the hypotenuse. So it's always the longest side and it's always across from the 90 degrees. So here in this case, X would be the hypotenuse side. So usually we define these, the hypotenuse as C squared and then the other two sides as A and B. If we have to solve for one of the other sides, then it will look like always the hypotenuse being subtracted by the other side squared because C is always the longest side or the hypotenuse. So if I'm solving for X, X is the hypotenuse because it's across from the 90 degrees. So we are going to say x squared is equal to 4.5 squared, because that's one side, plus the other side, 3.4 squared. Rewrite everything down. You're going to get out your calculator and you're going to put 4.5. If you have this square button right here, you can use it. It'll square it. And you can hit equal, so that's 20.25 plus. If you don't have a square button you know how to use, just do 3.4 times 3.4, and that equals 1156. Then you're going to add those two and that becomes 3181. Now this is not your final answer because right here this is x squared. You need to square root that to get rid of the square. So those do the opposite and you will end up with what x is. So on mine I use the square root button. Right here it's orange. So I'm going to press second function, press the orange, and 3181, and I hit equals 5.64. We only need a couple decimals because I need to round that to one decimal place. 5.6, let's look back up here. They both were centimeters, so that's a good thing. And there's my final answer rounded to one decimal place or to the nearest tenth. Okay, now the next one, when I take a look at this, this is the hypotenuse. It's the longest side, and the side I want to solve for is one of the smaller sides or shorter sides, so I'm going to use this equation. This is the hypotenuse, so I'm going to subtract the other side squared. Make sure you square them, because that's another mistake some people make. So. 9.6 times 9.6, 92.16, and 3.6 squared. You can use the square button, hit equals, and then add them together. 105.12, and don't forget, we need to square root. So we will square root that, and I get x is equal to 10.25. Take a look at the units, okay? And let's round to one decimal place, which is going to be 10.3 centimeters. And we're done. So now we'll take a look at perimeter and area. We have to make sure we understand the two of these. Perimeter, remember, is going around the outside edge. And area is, think of it as covering. Covering the whole shape. Okay, so this is one dimensional when you go around the outside. 
one dimension. Covering the whole shape would be two dimensions. That's why the answer is always squared or to the power of two. So it says you find the perimeter and area of each of the following shapes, round to one decimal if necessary. So the first thing to realize is this is a rectangle, so it means these two sides are equal in length and these two opposite sides are equal in length. So when I go to through, do the perimeter, there are one, two, three, four sides. So we want to go around the edge. So literally we have 14 plus 8 plus 14 plus 8. So you can see that we've done each one twice. And just add those up on your calculator. 14 plus 8 plus 14 plus 8. and you get 44. Make sure we have the right units, it's centimeters, and there is your perimeter. Okay. Now if we want to do area, you can definitely use your formula sheet, and if you look that up, make sure you're on the area side. Area of a rectangle equals length times width. Okay. So the length right here is 14, and the width is 8. So on your calculator, you know, 8 times 14 is 112. I don't need to round anything here, but it's centimeters times centimeters. So that's going to be centimeters squared because that is two-dimensional. So there's my perimeter and area of the rectangle. Sorry, maybe you can't see that. All right, perimeter goes around the edge, area, you have to imagine covering the whole thing. That's why it's centimeters squared. There's two dimensions, all right? So now this one, we want to do the perimeter of a right angle triangle. So I know I'm going to have to do Pythagorean theorem Pythag to find x for perimeter. Because I don't know what x is, so they've left that out. And let's go ahead and do that first. So that is the hypotenuse. So this is the one where I have to add the two sides up. So we're doing perimeter here. So I need to find x first. So x squared is equal to 3.4 squared plus 4.5 squared. Wait, these numbers sound familiar. We've actually already done that up here. OK? So if you want to go through the same process, you can. But we've already done that up there. So let's go x is actually equal to 5.6 centimeters. All right, so when I want to do perimeter, perimeter is just going to be equal to three sides because there are one, two, plus three sides. So there's side one, side two, and side three. I'm just going to add those up. So it's going to be 3.4 plus 4.5 plus 5.6. Add them all up. So 3.4 plus 4.5 plus 5.6 and hit equals, it's 14.4. This is one dimension, so it's just centimeters. There's our perimeter. Now for area, take a look on your formula sheet. Okay, the one from the EQAO. Area of a triangle equals base times height divided by 2. So we have to make sure we know that this is the base and this is the height. And we know this because these are the ones that are 90 degrees. Hypotenuse doesn't help us find area, only helps us find perimeter. Okay, So we are going to do area. 
make sure we know the difference between these two things, okay? So the area of base is 4.5, height is 3.4, and don't forget to divide by 2. Put this on your calculator, 4.5 times 3.4, I hit equals, then divide by 2, you get 7.65. This is going to be centimeters squared because it's area, but I need to round to one decimal place, so seven point, some of you will say round up, some of you say round to six, well, we will round to 7.7 .7 centimeters squared, okay? So that is page number one. Don't forget, this is also posted online the solutions on our Google Classroom, okay? So let's go on to page number two. So this is area and perimeter of composite shapes. Composite shapes means that they are made up of more than one shape, okay? So to do perimeter of composite shapes, Make sure we need to know the, all the outside dimensions, okay? Because we go around the outside and we can see right here, this one I have, this one I don't have, and these two I have. So that means I need to solve for this side, okay? If I, if I need it. Um, for area, I need to break it up into smaller shapes and then I add them to get together, so. That's for area, and I can see right here, I actually have two shapes. There's actually a triangle and a rectangle in this picture, and they're separated by this dotted line. So let's take a look at this question. Jackson is buying paint for his wall, and this is the shape of the wall. One liter of paint covers nine meters squared. How many liters of paint does he need to cover the wall? So when I see cover, I think area, because I'm covering the whole thing. So says to justify my answer. So the first thing I'm going to think about is, let's break it down into the, our two shapes. I don't even need this side, because I'm not doing perimeter, okay, I'm only doing area. So let's do area of the triangle first. So that's going to equal area of my triangle equals base times height divided by 2. So I'm going to look here and like, oh, do I know my base? Well, yes, I do because this is 12 meters and so this side is as well. So I do know my base, but my height is only from here to here. It ends. And this 7.5 meters actually gives me the height of this whole shape. So what I need to do is think about this 2.5 is the height or the width if you want to think of it as this small rectangle. So that's 2.5 on this side as well. So I just need to subtract that off of 7.5 and I will get my height right here. So this height is equal to 7.5 minus 2.5 which gives me 5 meters for the height of my triangle. So my base is 12, my height is 5, and I don't forget to divide by 2. Get your calculator out. 12 times 5 is 60. 60 divided by 2 is 30. So that's 30 meters squared. Okay, and that's just the triangle. So I still need to do my rectangle, okay? And I'm going to add the two at the end. So the rectangle, if we take a look at it, area of the rectangle is base times, sorry, length times width, or length times width. And length is 12 meters, and the width is 2.5 meters. So I'm going to do that on the calculator. 12 times 2.5 ends up being 30 meters. So now my total area 
area total is actually 30 meters squared plus 30 meters squared. I forgot the square up here. Don't forget that's two-dimensional. So that ends up being 60 meters squared. Now I'm not finished. That's just my total area. I was originally asked for <coughs> to cover the wall. So that brings me to this 9 meters squared. One liter of paint covers 9 meters squared. So I want to take my 60 meters squared and divide by 9 meters squared. So I'll take my calculator and I will 60 divided by 9 and I get 6.66666 and it goes on forever. And if you remember, that's a little dot over the top. So that means 6.6 .6 cans of paint. But I can't buy 6.6 .6 cans of paint. I need more than 6. So I'll have to round up and buy 7 cans of paint paint. I'll have a little bit extra. So therefore, Jackson needs to buy seven cans of paint to cover the wall. And there you go. If you need to take a look at that, you can pause it. I will go on to a volume, okay? So volume is three dimensions, or three-dimensional, okay? And also another place to look, we look on our, our EQAO formula sheet, make sure you are on the right side, right? One side is I think volume, the other side is for area and perimeter. So right away I'm going to look at this and I'm going to remind myself that this is a cylinder. Okay, a cylinder, the equation, I need the radius, which is only half of this. Okay, so the radius is 6 divided by 2, which is 3 centimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and look that up, and the volume of the cylinder is pi r squared times height. This 11 is the height, and I have the radius. And if you have a pi button, you go ahead and use the pi button. If you don't have a pi button, then pi is equal to 3.14. Radius is going to be 3, and we need to square that, and the height is 11. Now, if you don't remember how to use your square button, you definitely can just go 3 times 3. All right, so let's put all of that in our calculator. 3.14 times 3 times 3 times 11. And there we get 310.86. 310.86. ,86. Let's take a look at our units. They're centimeters but here they were centimeters squared from the square. Volume is three dimensions, and we are going to round that to the closest decimal, where it says right here, one decimal place. So it's 310.9, because this six is bigger than five, so which makes this eight closer to nine. And there we go. That is the volume of this cylinder. So little tricks in this one. They gave us diameter. We had to figure out the radius. Okay. If you're not using your pi button, you can just use 3.14. All right. So first, let's identify the shape. The shape is a prism. Okay. So the volume is just length times width times height. Those are the three dimensions. So let's go ahead and put them in. Eight times 6 times 10. Get used to your calculator for the exam and put that in 8 times 6 times 10. And you get 480. Volume is three dimensions. These all are in centimeters, centimeters cubed, and there we go. There is the volume 
of our rectangle. All right, on to page number three. Actually, maybe we'll pause right there. 